welcome to Megiddo, the last setting of the final throwdown between our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach and HaSatan. We're entering the city gates of ancient Megiddo. Just the way that back in ancient times the people would have walked through here. This place is dated to around 6,000 BC. It was abandoned at about 568 BC. This is just the beginning. Let's go up to the top. So it's here, Megiddo, we're overlooking the Yezreel Valley, which means where Yah or El sows, very fertile, plains, lots of farms. We're within sight of Mount Tabor, Mount Hermon, and Mount Carmel. This is literally ground zero, like Marlon said, of Armageddon, which is the Greek form, Greek way of saying Megiddo. Now we're here at Tel Megiddo, and the Lord showed us some very interesting things. This valley itself, just by itself the valley, the history of warfare goes back to the ancient Egyptians' first recording of one, a body count, and the use of composite bows in warfare. Napoleon has fought here. This is also the place uh, right at the southern part of Tabor where the camp of Deborah and Barak uh, were when Sisera came with the Canaanite armies against them. This valley is also where we find the battle between Gideon and the enemies of Israel. Now, some really neat revelation about when Mashiach comes. Mashiach is going to come and set foot where? On the Mount of Har Hamishka, the mountain of anointing. Now, why is this important? He sets foot on Har Hamishka, the very mountain, the Mount of Olives, where the olives were pressed and the anointing oil was used and manufactured for the anointing of kings and priests. So you can imagine when he sets foot on Mount of Olives, crush. During Yom Teruah, Feast of Trumpets, we don't know when, but we know Mashiach comes, Feast of Trumpets, the appointed time. He sets foot, crushes the olives, he's anointed as king and priest. Then what happens? Then he rushes the enemy, the offensive, and takes the enemy by storm in this place, Megiddo, where the blood comes to the bridle of the horses. And it's there where again, he sees the, the blood. You know, he was, he was at the Garden of Gethsemane during um, the time before his arrest and there he was at the olive press, being pressed and pressing in. And so we see yet again that olive oil anointing and then the shedding of the blood. And then we see the water come into play. We see all of those things at his death right before. And when we see it again, is when he comes again. So the water and the blood came when, with the piercing of the lance at his side the first time. And here again, we see the blood, but it's not his this time. Our conquering king, Mashiach ben David. First he came as Mashiach ben Yosef, and now the conquering king. And then, so where is the water, you may ask? So we've got Har Hamishka, right? We have the oil. We have the blood from Revelation. The blood coming up to the bridle of the horses. And we're going to take you where you can see the actual valley where this battle is going to take place. The water comes from Mount Hermon, 
it says in Tehillim in the Psalms, it says like the dew from Mount Hermon running like down like Aaron, like oil from Aaron's beard. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, I didn't say that exactly. That's why I love how even Yeshua said, it is written. Um, but it is written that there's dew that comes from Mount Hermon. But we're in the desert, right? There's one time during the year where the waters come rushing down the dry valley riverbeds of Mount Hermon. So now we have three elements. The oil of anointing, the blood, and the water. And the blood and the water are testimonies. They're witnesses in the sight of two or three witnesses, right? But you've got the olive oil too. And the olive oil was used to anoint both the priests and the kings. The Shiach is all three. <laughs> the warrior, priest, king. <laughs> warrior being the blood. So as we take you here to the top of this tell, Megiddo is also known as the jewel, the jewel of biblical archaeology. This site right here, still ongoing excavations. It is a World Heritage Site. The original village was an ancient Canaanite village that over the centuries and over different conquering periods, more villages and more towns were built upon it. And it's very fascinating here in Israel that time is like almost accelerated. Like we went to a place where eight years ago was a beautiful, thriving, lush place. And within a short amount of time, already starting to get covered up by the desert. Now, if you see that bird over there, I don't know. He just dipped down below the surface. I don't know if you'll be able to see him. But the birds like to do that here at the cliffs. They'll, they'll catch the wind coming up. They call it a lift. And they'll, they'll point their wings at a, at a certain angle and they'll be able to just to hover there, to hover in the same place without doing anything. It's beautiful. Now there were sacrifices that were done here. Uh, I know that there's one of the oldest discovered altars. Uh, one of the oldest discovered altars is up in this tell. Uh, and the, there's animal sacrifices there because of the amount of animal bones found, even including a lion's bone was found. So now we're gonna give you a, a sweeping view of where Megiddo, where Armageddon, where the final battle between Mashiach and the nations, it says every nation in scripture will come against Israel. And it's going to happen here, in this valley where many, many centuries of warfare and bloodshed have taken place. It's Mount Tabor in the distance. Mount Tabor, from the earliest teaching like you saw, Mount Tabor is the Mount of Transfiguration. Again, a testimony. Ooh, look at that hawk. I don't know if you can see him. See that hawk right in front of the camera? He's just chilling right there. I hope you can see it. But there's a hawk who's caught on the updraft. There's Mount Tabor, where Yeshua and some of the Talmudim saw Yeshua speaking with Moshe and Eliyahu to the Torah and to the testimony. If it does not speak according to these things, dot, 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 dot.
not only is there remains of plaster everywhere, also stones that have been worked, uh, utilitarian stonework. But where we are here looks like what is the remains of where once stood some sort of temple. I'm going to show you some shots. Literally, there is pottery shards everywhere. Just scattered. Thousands of years worth of pottery everywhere. You see it sticking out of the walls. You see people walking on it. Um, literally everywhere you look. That's the rim from a piece of pottery. So you can see where it's shaped, the pottery rim. Literally everywhere. Take an old cistern. As you can see, pottery shards everywhere. And the site continues. Here's a an outer rim of a bowl everywhere. What you see there in the distance is a public granary. Breathe life, oh, look, right here. See? There's more just sitting there. Thousands of years of history. More bone. But some of you who are really good at, at puzzle pieces and putting things together, I bet you'd have a blast here at putting together all these pieces of pottery. <laughs> I want to be careful where I step because it's kind of like Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Like, you just walk all over, you're walking on pottery shards. I try not to. Now we're coming over here onto another section of this town, the city of Tal Megiddo. What you see right here is a public granary. This is where the excess grain would be stored for public use. So if you were in need of grain, see the little walkway? See how the little walkways walk down 
towards the bottom, this was the public granary. This is what's left of the Southern Palace. And the stones were usually eight to 10 cubits big. Uh, it's still undergoing excavation. But this is where the most expensive stones were found. They were hewn. Look, here's a, a basin. What stories would these stones tell? See large chunks of plaster. This looks like some sort of temple. Oh, no, horse stables. Horse stables with watering troughs for the horses. So for all you horse lovers, this is where you would have brought your horse, stabled them for the evening, and they would have been fed and watered. Uh, this is the entrance to the water system. There's actually a, a tunnel down there that goes underneath the city where you would gather water.
in the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath, Pileser, king of Assyria, came and captured Ejon Abel, Bet, Ma'acha, Yanawa, Kadesh, Hazor, Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Natali, and he carried the people away to Assyria. And we know that King Josiah of Yehuda was killed by Pharaoh Necho right here in this valley that we're looking at. It's in 2 Kings 23, 29 through 30. Now this encounter of King Josiah being killed may have taken place in one of these Assyrian palaces. That's what we're looking at here is the, the remnants of an Assyrian palace. And the location of where King Josiah may have been slain. So this is one of the most unique places. The University of Ch Chicago back in the 1920s, uh, mid 1910s, 1930s, came in and dug this trench. This is a very common technique in archeology span where you dig into a mound. And what they discovered was monumental. This is also one of the reasons why this site is called the cradle of biblical archeology. span As they were coming in, you can see the layers upon layers of different civilization periods that have been built here. You can see the very, the very first layer, you can see a stone wall of, a, of another layer, a building. This is also the place of worship. As you'll see, the camera's gonna pan in on the circular altar. And that altar was used for sacrificing animals. Uh, thousands of animal bones have been found. And again, like I said, one including that of a lion. And this is an ancient Canaanite altar of worship, uh, also a place where many people would come to worship th those who made themselves out to be gods in this land. And we know that there's only one God, the Most High, Yahweh Elohim. So this would have been one of the places scripture refers to as the high places that were set up for worshiping um, other gods. and. Even, even now, I think about the fact that Yeshua will take this high place and his world will go forth out of Zion, Zion. And Father, we lift up your name, lift up your name, Abba, Yahweh, here in this place. You are the highest Elohim. You are the highest Elohim. So this is what Aloe looks like on the other side of the world from us. Uh, if you were to burn your finger in the kitchen this is what you would pick. And I don't know about you, but America, I think we got the short end of the aloe stick. Check out those blossoms. Wow, beautiful.
looks like there's a piece of this Italian or, the, or this Malek stone right here. I don't know if you can see this if you hit, if you hit the tilt on it. Okay. So this is very much like this. Part of Never mind. That's Chinese Malek. <laughs> stone. <laughs> Styrofoam. <laughs> so, never mind that piece of useless historical information. We will continue with our journey. <laughs> so love is a theory, a philosophy, an idea, a word, but it's also a sound, and this is the sound. Yeah, so what I did is I used it as a rhythm because it only has a few letters and then I made up um, a melody to go with it. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs>